I think it's time to go to our next guest. Uh, we'd love for you to meet Fanny Liao, who is joining us from Southern California. So she's already feeling that nice warm weather on this first day of spring. So again, Jealous. Fanny, I know, <laughs> Fanny Liao from Fans in the Garden. Take Thank, the Thank you, Rebecca and Tracy, for the awesome kickoff. I'm very excited to be here today to talk about Fairy Moors, Jiffy, and Seed Starting. My name is Fanny. I garden here in Zone 10B in Southern California. I am the gardener behind the Instagram account, Fans in the Garden. If you've been following, thank you very much. So let's get into it. So what seeds am I starting now in mid-March? I am doing summer winter squash, cucumbers, beans, lots of herbs, lots of flowers, and possibly a second round of tomatoes. Well, what happened to your first round of tomatoes? Uh, well, here in Southern California, we can actually start our tomato, pepper, and eggplant seeds as early as January. Starting them indoors gives us a head start so that once our nighttime temperature reaches a 60 degrees consistently, we can get those seedlings out. Now, it's even more important for colder climates, um, gardeners to start indoors because you have a shorter growing season. And so you want your crop to mature and ripen before your next frost. Now, how do you check your frost date? Well, go online and enter your zip code and check when um, your last frost date would be. And then you just count backwards to see when you should start your seeds indoors. Now, what type of growing medium do I use? Well, Jiffy offers a couple of different options. Um, what I have used when I first started gardening and what I think is um, easiest is their peat pellets. Now you can start them um, in a tray such as these, the 10, 20 trays. Jiffy actually has them um, in different sizes that comes with the dome. Um, you can start those in, in a tray like this if you're doing a big batch. If you are doing just a few because you don't have that much time, you can actually get individual ones. Um, this is the large, this is the medium, and this is the small. So you wanna put them in a tray and add warm water. Warm water is very important because if you put cold water, it actually does not expand as quickly. So you want to put warm water let it soak for a few minutes and it's gonna expand and then you can sow your seeds. Now they also offer a pre-made seed starting mix that I have here. And you'll need um, Jiffy Pods, three inch or five inch, depending on where you're trying to sow, or these strips. I'm going to show you what I got so in these. So with the seed starting mix, you want to make sure it's pre-moistened. Um, you don't want it soggy, so make sure it's not dripping water. It should hold its shape when you crumble it. This It's kind of like a crumbly brownie mix. So you just want to fill your pots. Okay. Depending on what you want to sew, you could do the three inch or you can do the five inch. I'm going to do my pumpkins in this five inch so that I won't have to up pot it once it's big. And then these, I think I'm going to do cucumber. Now with the strips, you can do herbs, you can do flowers. Um, whatever um, is a smaller crop, you can use these strips. Now, what I like about these is they're biodegradable. And so you can kind of just rip out a section right here, plant it in soil, and it's gonna, and roots are just gonna come out of it. Oopsie, now these are ready. Maybe a little bit more for the big one. So what am I sewing now? Let's go with pumpkin, big one. Now I have, I want to show you these pumpkin seeds here. So some seeds you actually want to soak it overnight or at least a few hours. Those seeds include corn, um, beans, some uh, squashes, and that's because you want, see this here, the skin is, breaking apart so that the seed can pop up easily. 
it's easier to sprout this way. So beans, now let me just find my pumpkin seeds. Now, how deep do you sow the seeds? Well, it depends on what you're trying to grow. Um, some will call for just sowing on top of the surface of the soil, lightly cover it. Some will say quarter inch, some as deep as one inch. It really just depends on what you're trying to grow. So always check the seed packets instructions. Okay, and then here, cucumber seeds. Now, how many seeds do you want to sow? Well, it really depends. You should at least do three to four, but if it's a rare seed and you only have a few, you know, what can you do? Just one or two in each pot or each pea pellet. Okay, and then look, it's fully expanded. And you just want to put them in your tray and add your seeds. Now for the smaller pea pellets, I like to use them for herbs and flowers. Um, because once they are big enough to transplant out, I could just remove the netting and I could just plant the whole thing. And it's important that you remove the netting because it does restrict some of the roots if the roots are big. Okay. Now, you definitely want to use a dome. And also, a heat map. So why is it important? Well, you're mimicking conditions um, that are most favorable for the seeds to start. So you want to use a heat mat, put your tray on top, put the dome on top, and this is the reason why. I started these seeds three days ago and it's already sprouting because I put this tray on top of a heat mat and then I had the dome on top keeping the moisture in there. And that's gonna help the seeds sprout, germinate as soon as possible. Um, versus, you know, the few days to a couple of weeks more that it's going to take. So um, once the seeds sprout, what do you do? Well, once it sprouts, let's say like this one here, there's two, there's two seedlings, there's two sprouts there. What do you do? Well, you definitely want to thin to one so that the stronger one is not competing for nutrition. Um, so you want to just take a little scissor, a little snip, and snip that off. Pick the one that's the healthiest. There you go. So when you're sowing a pack of seeds like this, when do you take the dome off? Well, you take the dome off when 50% of the seeds have germinated. Um, otherwise, you can keep the dome on, and it's going to help the rest of the seeds stay warm, keep the moisture in good to go. Um, and so when do you fertilize? Well, it really depends. But what I like to do is once it has two sets of true leaves, um, that's when I dilute a liquid fertilizer, um, I use half strength, and then um, I water from the bottom, you always want to water from the bottom because you don't want any issues with damping off, you don't want, you know, fungus gnats and, uh, nasty things to grow on top of this uh of the pea so you definitely want to bottom water now when seeds are big enough and you see roots coming through well they are big enough to up pot now if you are not ready to transplant them out yet um that's why it's also good to have one of these um three inch or five inch pots because you can easily remove the netting here and you just pop it into um, a potting mix. You wouldn't use a seed starting mix anymore. You would use a potting mix. You pop it in and then you can wait a few more weeks until you know you can plant them out until your temperature is warm enough or until you have time to do it. So the last part I wanna cover is hardening off. Hardening off just means that you're going to take your plants out to acclimate to the weather outside um, once it's ready. So how do you know it's ready? Well, 
like I said, if this, uh, if you're ready to transplant this out now, you can start hardening off now. Um, what it just means is that you're taking your seeds out to, um, out to outside and it's, uh, it needs to just get used to being outdoors. Um, so you start off with taking it out for 30 minutes the first day and then another 30 minutes. Um, and then you just increase um, the time, you know, throughout the week. And by the end of the first week, you can transplant it out. Now, don't transplant out your seedlings in the middle of the day at noon. You definitely want to do it in the more early mornings or late afternoons so that, so that once your plants are in ground, um, there's less of a chance of transplant shock um, or it's going to get burnt. So that's all the time I have now. I know it was super quick. So if you want to continue this conversation, follow me on Instagram. That's fans in the garden, F-A-N-S uh, in the garden. And we can continue this conversation there. So otherwise, remember to follow all the other speakers and back to the studio.